Okay, two things. One, there's a guy in AMC land on the forum that's taken one of these hoods and made it into a cow induction hood, which is actually pretty cool. I get he, from what I could see in the background, he does fiberglass work, so it's not like it was like a experiment. He made the he made the plug, made the molds, and now he's selling the hoods. Uh, basically, what he's done is he's taken this area, this exact design, and he raised it up. I think four inches. So you have this original design in the front. It's set back a little more. Well, let me reword that. It starts in the same spot, so the slope continues. It's not like it comes up and then goes straight up. That slope continues. In other words, that raised hood, it might be an inch and a half in the front, is now four inches. Okay, and obviously the sides get taller, and it you know, goes to the windshield and comes back like a cow hood. Uh, actually, pretty cool. Pretty nice work, nice craftsmanship. Um, not really a cow scoop guy, but I like the, f the design in the front. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it fits the car, or the style car, and this obviously this hood fits many things. Um, but it's a pin-on hood. And if people don't know what that is, that means it's held on with pins. Either four hood pins, uh, enough Zeus fasteners to make you want to kill somebody type of hood. So it's for racing. Um, but besides that, okay, let's get on to the Iwata gun. Okay. Everybody knows Junior does airbrushing. Not like artwork, he does his airbrushing with his models and his wheels and all the stuff that he does, okay? Um, the first Iwata gun he got, he got from Tom Noble, which he still uses. Okay, but since then he's added to the co collection. Because you need, as you know, just like in body work, you need different guns for different things, for different fan widths, for different whatever. So he decided to buy like a multi-purpose Iwata gun. So what that would be is, uh, I've had my Devilbus one in my hand, it's called a, Devilbus calls it a multi-purpose something. Basically it's a gravity feed gun, but it's smaller scale. So you would do like door jams with it a model, uh, like he wants to paint some speakers, things like that, okay, repair areas on the car, okay, so you don't got to whip out a big gun, um, it can shoot a panel if you really wanted to, it has a 1.2 tip, which is the biggest they make for that gun, and it has a nice fan, I played with the gun, um, he put some stuff in there, we played with it, really good, I'm not that fam familiar with high volume guns, you know, low pressure, you know, the, the settings are totally different than the gun I use. But with all that said, um, he used it, cleaned it, and the cup oxidized. Big time. First day. Okay? So, the cup looks like it's spun aluminum. The rest of the unit looks like it's, I'm going to guess to make, maybe chrome-plated aluminum with a bunch of stainless steel in it. Okay? And the gun was not cheap. By no means. Um... So, the cup, the cup totally discolored on the inside and the outside. So, he went through the trouble of going on the website, leaving whatever information I'd leave. He left a message, and then he contacted them this morning again to find out. Now, you ready for this? This is the way it works when you buy an Iwata. So, he found out. He found out there's two divisions, one for the airbrush, one for the guns. He's been dealing with the airbrush division. Now, he's dealing with the gun division. The way it works is, okay, the cup is stained. He has the receipt. Obviously, he just purchased it. It's not like this thing's 100 years old. You have to take the gun back to where you bought it, leave it with them, and where you bought it from will contact a rep from Iwata. The rep from Iwata, when he gets a chance, will go down there and look at it and give it an approval whether they want to warranty it or not warranty it. That's exactly how it works. So, my son said, I bought it on Amazon. And they said to him that he has to contact the actual seller from Amazon. It has to get shipped back to that seller. And then wherever that seller is in the United States or world, he has to make a claim. And then a representative will come down to that area, look at the gun, and decide whether to warranty the cup or not. I said to my son, you got to be kidding me. 
you got it for what you just paid for that gun this is what it is I said did you ask them if you could show them the receipt and send them a picture he goes yep he goes that wasn't good enough now my son's not trying to replace the gun my son's trying to replace the cup and find out why it discolored and it, it looks pretty bad um, and my son isn't like me yeah. he keeps his stuff spotless <laughs> Mine, as you can see, I don't care how the outside looks, as long as the inside works and no chunks are going to fall onto it while I paint. I, I consider it a good luck chunk because the last gun I had had like, I couldn't even tell you how many different colors on it between enamels, lacquers, and Deltron. And then I went to shoot a vehicle and my friend's like, oh, let me put it, let me clean it in the gun cleaner. I took it all apart, cleaned it in the gun cleaner, and I never got it to spray right again. So I consider that like a bad luck only. With all that said, um, Junior has a brand new gun, and if he wants to use it, he can use it, but it looks kind of shitty, and I think the uh, customer service is a little crappy, um, but, you know, I could see if, if my son called up and he de was demanding a new gun, demanding this, demanding that, demanding shipping, that, not at all. All he wanted was the cup replaced. And that wasn't him trying to keep the old cup. It was him wanting to send the old cup back and let them replace it so it can keep going. And that's not the way it works. So technically what's going to happen is he's going to send that cup back. He's going to wait. Okay? And if they don't give it the stamp of approval, my son's going to have to pay to have that cup shipped back to him. And I think that's going to suck. Because if it does go down like that, you know, we're going to have to make some kind of video. Um, I don't know how a corporation could be that big and uh, that high of standards and just let it sink like that to that kind of level. But I guess we're about to find out, huh? Um, he did say that we could bring it to the paint supplier right here on the corner from where I live, a mile away. He goes, but in reality since you didn't buy it there they have to be willing to do all the paperwork which is paperwork involved they have to be willing to contact the rep and they have to be willing to spend the time with the rep when they come down and my son's like but I don't even buy paint there anymore he goes how's that going to work out and he's absolutely right so with that said guys um, I think this hood's looking pretty good okay I mean, not that we could see much. We know how the satin goes. But I can tell you right now, it doesn't have the big dents in the body lines anymore. Well, they were big dents. It looked like somebody put this thing on the hood of their car and strapped it down. That's what it looked like. Um, so, um, possibly tomorrow. Well, I'm going to try and do it before the weekend so I could get high, so I could wet sand this thing on Saturday. So, before the weekend, how's that sound? I'd like to get the couple of spots fixed and uh, get it in high build so this weekend we can block it and see how it works out. I think we're going to be pretty good. So with that said guys, I rambled long enough. I'm out of here. Everybody have a good night. I think we're humming along. Sooner or later you're going to see color on here. Hopefully not later, later, later. Uh, so, okay.